Warning. In this episode, we talk about the events of A Dance of Dragons, the fifth book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series. If you want to read this book and don't want to be spoiled, you best check out now. You have been warned. We're going to start off this episode with a little story. <clears throat> There once was a cook who was a brother of the Night's Watch who was entertaining a guest, an Andong king. He took the king under his roof, gave him guest right, and made him a pie. The king enjoyed the pie so much that he asked for a second piece. Unbeknownst to him, however, the cook had killed the king's son and baked him into the pie. For killing a guest under his own roof, the cook angered the gods and was punished. He was cursed and transformed into a giant white rat who would be unable to eat anything but his own young. Yeah, it's a pretty messed up story, but it's also an important one in Westeros. It establishes how important it is to the people of Westeros, and specifically the people in the North, that guest right always be upheld. Any who break this rule become pariahs in Westeros. So, when the Freys betrayed the Starks, guests under their own roof who were granted guest right, they were tarnished forever. Whether the supposed curse from the old gods is real or not does not matter, because the perception of them among their peers makes the curse real in all the most important ways. In the books, the Freys and Bolton's betrayal at the Twins leads to Winterfell being taken by the Boltons, just like in the show. Since the Boltons are the new Wardens of the North, Northmen are bound by law to aid them, and one family that answers that call is the Manderleys. But it's revealed that it's not exactly by choice, as the Boltons have actually taken Wyman Manderley's sons hostage. Because of this, and because he's a loyal man of the North, Wyman is pissed. So while he's pretending to be loyal to the Boltons, he's really undermining them whenever he can. It's even heavily implied that he went so far as to kill three prominent Freys on the road to Winterfell. But after that, things start to get weird. Wyman decides to serve everyone three meat pies at Ramsay's wedding, and makes a point to serve the pies to the Boltons and the Freys specifically. Three pies, three missing Freys, I, I think you can make the connection. And to top it all off, the ballad of the Rat Cook is sung at the wedding, just in case you had your doubts about what was going on here. This is, uh, gross, and it's clearly something only a messed up guy like George R. R. Martin could ever think up, right? Well, uh, believe it or not, he's not the first person to write this kind of plotline. William Shakespeare beat him to it by about 500 years. In one of his early plays, Titus Andronicus, a very similar story happens, where a man tricks his hated rival into believing he's not dangerous to him, only to reveal to his rival that he has eaten his own sons in a pie Titus served him. Also, a lot of other messed up stuff happens, and this is generally considered to be one of Shakespeare's least admirable plays, as well as the most crass, but the parallels between this and George R. R. Martin's work are not difficult to see. In Titus Andronicus, this is portrayed as an ugly and appalling act of revenge that is the end result of a cycle of violence that drove Titus mad. No one in the play comes out with a happy ending. The cycle of revenge destroys everything it touches. In A Song of Ice and Fire, it's unclear what we're meant to feel about this event. Some readers hate the phrase so much that they praise this act of revenge, but I don't really think it's anything to celebrate. The Freys and Boltons are terrible people, and they deserve their comeuppance, but the Manderleys arguably did something just as despicable when they exacted their revenge in this way. Now, I'm not sure what the parallel signifies, if anything, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Manderleys don't end up getting away with what they did by the end of the series, if the Shakespearean roots are any indication. What do you think? Were the Manderleys justified in their actions, or should they have gone about this a different way? Let me know in the comments below, as well as letting me know what you want to see in one of these Westeros Crash Courses in the future. Just put it in the comments below. I'll read it. I read everything. I'm always watching. Sir, so, 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 so.